Hello everyone welcome back to AB Space Channel. My name is Armin your today's host. The Starship 28 and the Super Heavy Booster 10, the next prototypes to fly, have already been piled up on the launch pad, and this means that we have already entered at the same time Musk, a piece of time in which information about the upcoming launch of the Starship. At the moment we have very solid information that the launch license will be released this month of February, probably at the end. And in fact, we already have a tweet from Elon Musk saying that the launch will happen within of three weeks. Obviously this is the famous Elon Musk, but we also had official confirmation from SpaceX just a few hours ago that they are already preparing for Web3 and virtual that would occur in the next days. And if you want to know everything about this new attempt to reach orbit and everything that has happened these last few weeks, we start with the changes in Starbase, because although they have not been such radical changes like after the first launch, because they almost had to rebuild the reform hole, during this time Starbase workers have made some changes in the infrastructure after the second flight. The highlight is, without a doubt, the construction of a second launch tower. Something that should not surprise us because in all the official renders that SpaceX had shown them, two launch towers appear, so it was evident that in one day they are going to start building it. And why do they want a second tower? Well to reduce the launch rate, because keep in mind that before a launch, the prototypes have to make a full stack, a spin prime of the engines, a static fire. So right now, SpaceX is building a second launch tower, because they are very confused that this massive rocket will be the next step in human exploration, they want a second launch, even though the Starship. SpaceX has begun to dismantle several tanks from the verticals to replace them with tanks' horizontal surfaces that are less exposed to rocks and flying debris. In these tanks, SpaceX stored all types of liquids for launches, such as water, nitrogen, methane and oxygen. And now, in addition, it will also store them in the new horizontal tanks that have already been installed and completed, thus increasing the storage capacity of these liquids. And this, along with some new coolers and pumps that they have installed in these new tanks' horizontals, the filling time of the Super Heavy and the Starship for launch day. Previously, it took just over one and a half hours to fill propellants into both prototypes, but, however, now, with this greater capacity, it will only take around of one hour. SpaceX continues to get better at making Starship launches faster, something necessary when they are going to have two launch pads to do several flights a day. But come on, let's get into the most exciting part, what are the next? Prototypes in flight? How is that launch license? And, when could we have the long-awaited third flight? Well look, here you have Booster 10 leaving the hangar and heading to the platform of the launch. This was last February 9th, and here you have the Starship doing the same thing. This was February 10th. The two prototypes have already passed the necessary tests for flight, and they only need to make the wetless gigahertz, so both are already waiting on the platform, but what are they different? These prototypes compared to the previous ones, or rather, how is SpaceX going to do this time to prevent them from exploding again? Well, we start with the Super Heavy, look what we saw in Booster 10 when he was heading towards the platform. Do you see these welding marks? Well that's very strange. No other booster has ever had them, and knowing which is the most accepted theory which are breakwaters. That is, some structures, some internal partitions, that would prevent the sudden movement of the liquid inside hits the walls of the tanks and may break them. This is in fact the main theory to explain the explosion of the Super Heavy during the second launch. But it is not the only different thing that this Super Heavy has. It also has a new design of domes, which are the structures that act as a cover for propellant tanks. Look, what they are like now in Booster 10 and what they were like in Booster 9. Clearly, SpaceX gains some more tank space with this new design, and therefore, you can load a little more propellant. And beyond internal partitions and new domes, little else, really. The Booster 10 is very similar to the Booster 9, which makes us think that SpaceX is quite convinced that the booster explosion can be solved with these break the new ones and changing the flight parameters, such as modifying the orientation, power and ignition of the engines. But let's go now with Starship 28, because this one does have several important changes compared to its predecessor, the Starship 25. This Starship S-28 has many changes in the holes through which the propellants are vented, both methane and oxygen. Thus, now some diffusers in the shape of a bell when the previous prototype was simply some holes in the fuselage. And then the distribution of the vent holes, located in the body of the ship and have been distributed differently. 
the methane ones were previously more attached to the thermal shield and now they are a little more centered, and the oxygen ones have gone from being two to being only one, and the two outputs. Bell-shaped oxygen vents have disappeared on the booster 7. And regarding the thermal parameters there have been several changes. The shield now looks much more uniform and aesthetically more beautiful. Notice how the heat shield on the front has been finished a little better, and how the aileron tiles have been changed to better fill the gaps. New tiles have even been placed where there were none before, such as under the structure where the ailerons are attached to the ship. However, although the method used to fix the tiles appears to remain the same. As before, workers have carried out individual tests on each tile, checking his grip, so this time we should see fewer tiles falling during the throw. Look thus, at this unpublished video taken from NASA's VW V-57 plane, as you can see the amount of thermal tiles that came off the Starship S-25. And another of the changes that stands out the most is the Starlink satellite dispenser, and this Starship is going to have a fully functional opening that could even be tested in space. This opening will serve to deliver Starlink 2.0 satellites as if they were the typical fish candies. But no, we don't think the Starship is going to be loaded with Starlink satellites, although curiously, this would have made Starship S-25 reach orbit. If the Starship on the second flight had been loaded with satellites, it would not have exploded. And finally, we go with one of the most important changes, the engines. Starship 28 finally has electric thrust vector control, so now, the engines no longer move with hydraulic pistons, which are very heavy and complex systems. Now they move with an electric control system with batteries. This, if you remember, was one of the great improvements that the super engines. Heavy in the second flight, and it was surely one of the changes responsible for seeing a performance perfect of the 33 engines during the launch. But now both Booster 10 and a Starship have vector control of the fully electric motors. But come on, let's talk about the third launch. Christian Dave Benport, a renowned Washington Post journalist, commented in a tweet a few days ago the following. I'm told the FAA is on track to issue a Starship launch license. In mid or late February. And people, I can assure you that this man from Benport is very well informed in everything regarding the FAA and SpaceX, so we can take his words as true. But I would rather say that the license could arrive at the end of February because NASA spaceflight colleagues have also managed to speak with the FAA and have informed them. The next Starship flight requires closing the investigation of the failures sooner occurred during the second flight and the modification of the license for the third launch. However, SpaceX's investigation into what happened on the second flight continues. If SpaceX has not yet submitted all the information required for the license modification launch, Come on, apparently, SpaceX has not closed its investigation into what happened in the Flight 2, and has yet to submit the necessary documentation for a new license. And the truth is, I don't know if this has anything to do with the fact that we still don't have official information about what happened to Booster 9 to end up exploding. Maybe more things happened to him than just the oxygen hitting the walls. However, as I have told you before, Iron also confirmed in a talk on Starby, Starship 25 exploded because it had no cargo on board. Basically, what he said is that the lighter Starship used less fuel and they then had to release the excess oxygen to bind weight and better simulate the behavior of the Starship in orbit. And it was during this 20th of the excess oxygen that something happened that we don't know either and it fills up with the ship, it ends up exploding. Be that as it may, SpaceX has not yet started with the classic tweets putting pressure on the FAA, saying they're ready to launch and all that stuff. So, the ball seems to be in SpaceX's court for the moment. However, I am convinced that when the internal investigation is completed and they present all the paperwork, the FAA is going to be much faster than on other occasions in granting the normal license. I believe that before March 15th we will have a launch. But this is for speculation. And, as has been said, we have already entered this period of time of speculation and release dates. So, they definitely have a backup plan for themselves. Even if that unexpected incident affects SpaceX's timeline, it will not be much because currently, in terms of hardware, SpaceX is making final preparations. Among them, the pair of Ship 28 and Booster 10 catch the public side the most. Ship 28 has been stationed at the engine installation stand where a Raptor vacuum engine was removed from the spacecraft on the morning of February 2nd. This is considered just an additional step to launch readiness. 
so we do not need to worry too much. Booster 10 reinstalled the hot staging ring, signaling the soon rollout of this super heavy booster back to the launch site. Once both prototypes are fully stacked, the only remaining step is the wet dress rehearsal, which is the last major test for a spacecraft before it's officially ready for flight. This puts the entire craft through each step of a simulated launch, exposing it to the super chilled fuels to ensure that everything will function properly on launch day. The next step is to obtain the modified launch license and launch. According to the plan, SpaceX seems to be aiming for a launch on the February this week, so we should see the full stack on the launch pad roughly a week from now. Looking at the updated photos, it's hard to imagine that the area was once filled with concrete blocks scattered everywhere. Recently, there have been some signs that work on OLM is nearing completion. On January 24, the media recorded images of a new concrete wall being installed between the orbital launch pad and the orbital tank farm. This replaces the previous HESCO barrier, which is primarily used by the United States military for the purpose of protecting against war bomb blasts. However, it was completely obliterated by the powerful blast from the Super Heavy Booster 7 in April last year. After the last liftoff, some cracks appeared on the mount's legs and this part, along with the entire OLM, also suffered the hard static fire test at the end of last year. So, on January 26, the legs were given a new coat of paint to give them a perfect look. It means that the work there is finished. Moving closer to the tank farm, where modernization works have become the center of attention recently. After removing two tanks on the external side, SpaceX reinforced the remaining tanks with the welded steel beam to prevent the ground support equipment shells from denting even further in the third launch. Not only Booster 10, but the other boosters are also nearing completion. On February 3rd, SpaceX shared the tweet. Super heavy boosters for the next three flights, with a fourth ready to stack in the star-based megabay. The tweet is attached with the picture, including boosters 10, 12, 11, and 13. Booster 10, 12, and 11 are the ones on the stands. Booster 11 looks to already have received engines. On both sides. There are two Booster 13 tanks with the liquid oxygen tank on the left and the methane tank on the right. With the incredible advancement of Starship today, it is certain that flights 4, 5, and beyond will take place much sooner than we might expect. SpaceX aims to launch Starship for the third time this month. For this to happen, as the company said, the hardware must be ready by January and the FAA must issue the license by February. However, with the current updates, is that target launch date possible? First of all, let's address the elephant in the room Elon Musk in his timeline. Can't help but say that, unlike his talent and his rich, this guy well, is pretty bad at predicting timelines. Musk also acknowledged that he's often optimistic regarding time. A tongue-in-cheek reference to his earlier delivery promises that came up short. Thus, the Cybertruck was originally slated for delivery in 2021 but it finally rolled out late last year. Another example is Starship. Remember the explosion on OLM in April 2023? The damage on the launch mount is not minor, but Elon still tried to soothe the fans' broken hearts by saying, learned a lot for next test launch in a few months. In fact, we had to wait seven months in total to witness Starship's flight too. To be fair, this delay is partly due to the slow approval of launch permits. But if the launch license factor is excluded, preparations for both the rocket and its ground support system also could not be completed in just a few months, as he said. Anyway, entrepreneurs by nature are very optimistic about their ventures else they wouldn't be doing it. Nevertheless, there is a truth that the more professional the Starship team is, the closer Elon's prediction will be to reality. Let me show you. According to the spokesperson of SpaceX, Jessica Jensen, Hardware for Starship Flight 3 will be ready in January, and the company expects to receive an FAA license in February and shortly after that. We have liftoff. With a fairly clean Stage 0 and the positive results after Flight 2 combined with the recent positive updates in Starbase, I'm pretty sure that this timeline is possible. Three major factors play here, the license, the launch vehicle itself, and the ground system that supports the launch. Beginning with the launch license, there is good news for you. The FAA is on pace to issue a Starship launch license mid to late February. 
The fact that the FAA urgently issued a license for Starship's third launch proves that the current situation is going smoothly, or at least the space company is no longer under pressure like before Flight 2. Backlight 1 the consequences of the explosion on OLM were far beyond what we could have unforeseen and led series of investigations ensues. In addition to undergoing the FAA's mishap investigation and complying with 63 corrective actions, SpaceX also had to wait for an investigation by FWS on an updated biological assessment under the Endangered Species Act. Given that, the FWS assessment centered on the potential impacts of a water deluge system, which SpaceX installed beneath Starbase Orbital Launch Mount after the April test flight. Up to now, the new system is still working very well, with no significant damage at Stage 0 after the November test, meaning no major changes to the launch pad. As a result, the FWS won't need to reassess, and this saves a lot of time. Another sensitive problem that made last year's situation more complicated was the environmental groups. A coalition of environmental groups sued the FAA, claiming the agency didn't fully analyze the environmental damage that SpaceX's huge Starship vehicle could cause to sensitive lands. It's surrounded by state parks, national wildlife refugee lands, and important habitat for imperiled wildlife. Fast forward to this year, SpaceX continues to face another lawsuit. From environmental groups related to the company's beach closures. Since the commercial space company began building and testing its Starship rocket there in 2019, its ability to shut off access to the pristine stretch of public coastline, which is guaranteed by the state constitution, has won the support of local and state officials in some courts. However, the environmentalists were unhappy with that decision, leading to the 2021 lawsuit targeting Elon Musk's company. Finally, they won in SpaceX. However, this is not much of a concern because SpaceX has become familiar with these local groups' displeasure for years.